Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our virtual Mr. Baruch here. We're holding Mr. Baruch Elk Aleph. And uh, to make up for the missed day yesterday, Mir Sashem, we will be learning today Daf Nun Zayin Ahmed Aleph as well as Daf Nun Zayin Ahmed Bez. So we've got plenty to do. Let's get started. We pick up on Nun Vav Ahmed Bez, two lines off the bottom, Simon Lamed Gimel Sif Bez. Of course, we're continuing to learn Hilchis Trillin. Says the Machaber. Im nifsiku tfirais ha tfilin. If the stitches of the tfilin break, the stitches of the tfilin become torn. And of course, we're referring to the stitches that go through the bottom, the stitches that go through the titura of the bias and stitch the bottom closed. These stitches over here, if they became torn. Im nifsiku tfirais ha tfilin. Laharambam, according to the Rambam, if you have two stitches next to each other and two of those stitches tear, or if three stitches tear, even if the three stitches are not next to each other, these tefillin are puzzled. That's the Shitas Rambam. However, the Machaber qualifies it and he says, when is this said? When we're talking about older tefillin. When we're talking about new tefillin. As long as the titura, the foundation of the bias, is intact and is in good shape. Then the bottom are still kosher, despite the fact that three stitches have torn. The Elohein Chadashim, how do we determine whether the Tfilin are considered new or old? Says the Mechaber, the Elohein Chadashim, what's considered new Tfilin? And this uh, is kind of astonishing what the Mechaber is going to say over here, at least to us, but I think it's an indicator of really the difference in quality between the Tfilin that we have now and the Tfilin that we had back then war. I don't know, it's because of poverty or because of the resources that were available to them. Don't forget, they also didn't have the sophisticated um, tools that we have to be able to make tefillin. We have presses that are precisely machined, etc., etc. I mean, nowadays, virtually all of our tefillin are gases. You go to pre-war Europe, virtually all of the tefillin were dacus. They were made out of very thin, soft hides, from small animals like sheep, lamb. Now we're dealing with very tough hides from gases, from oxen, etc. etc. But you see over here, take a look what the Bechaber says, chadashim. how do we determine if tefillin are considered new? If you could grab a part of the leather where the stitching was torn. So that means that you grab onto the titura, right? Like I'm doing here. I'm holding the titura where the stitches are. So I hold it where the stitches became torn. Um, by a tefillin, and you hang the tefillin over here. The chazak, and it's strong. The nifsak, and it doesn't break off. That's considered new. The im ein roy litleis by elohu nifsak, but if you cannot do that. And rather, it breaks off. That means that these bottom are old, and then the torn stitching is problematic. Um, at least, I hope I'm reading this Mechaber right. I think this is what Mechaber means. Hagah the Ramah says, Like we had previously in Sif Aleph over here in this simon, when we were speaking about the bottom, the individual bottom of the Shalroish being compromised, and over there we also had two shitas. We had over there the sheet of the Mechaber, who said older tefillin are more easily puzzled, newer tefillin are less easily puzzled, and the Ramah said that there are those say that there are those that say fakert. Older tefillin retain their kashras, newer tefillin become puzzle more easily. So too we have over here. We had the sheet of Sarambam. Sheet of Sarambam says two stitches next to each other. If they become torn, it's puzzle. Three stitches, even if they're not next to each other, it's puzzle. The Rabbah said, when is that true? By trillin that are chadashim, by new trillin, trillin that are yeshanim, 
I'm sorry, when is that true? By Yeshana, by older Tefillin. But Chadashim, if they're new Tefillin, then even if we have these stitches ra- or, um, ripped, it's still kosher, says the Ramah, the Yeshar, and the other way, the Bechadashim Psulim, there are those that say that by newer Tefillin, the either two stitches next to each other or three stitches passel them, will be Yeshanim Ksherim, but by older Tefillin it retains its kashrus. And the Ramah says, V'tayv lachush l'shtei asfaris, just like he did in Sif Aleph, the Rama says we, we should be choshish for both opinions. Kane Nira Lee. Let's see the the Mr. Brewer over here. Mr. Brewer, ice cut in your bays. Back on the bottom of Nunvav on the bays. Laha Rambam. Aval Shari Paiskim. But the other Paiskim, Pligale, they disagree with the Rambam. Umekila Bechal Gavdi Bishte Tvirais. And they're Makel by two torn Tvirais, by two torn stitches. Bechol Gavni, in every case. What does Bechol Gavni mean? It means both by Yeshanim, both by Chadashim. The other place can say that if you have two stitches ripped, it's still kosher. Even by Yeshanim, the Tefillin are still kosher. Ubishloisha Tvirais, but if three stitches became torn, Ubishloisha Tvirais Shinisiku, Machmirin, then the Paiskim are Machmir, Ta'afilu Tikun Bimakaima Hefsik Loimahani. Even if you would repair the tvira, either maybe tie it together or maybe put in another stitch, that still, it doesn't help. It's not, the repair is not efficacious. The genayu kishenikara tikkun v'shloisha mikaymas. Because it's a genayu to the tefillin that there should be three places on the tefillin where the tefillin had to be repaired. And this is bein b'chadashim u bein b'yashanim. So the Rambam said, two stitches are torn. So if we're dealing with yashanim, it's puzzle. Th- uh, two stitches next to each other by Yeshanim are puzzle. Three stitches by Yeshanim, even if they're not next to each other, they're puzzle. The other place can disagree with the Rambam, and they say two stitches next to next to each other that are torn are always kosher, both by Yeshanim and by Chadashim. Three stitches that are torn are puzzle, and you cannot even repair them because it would be a gnai. The gnai you kishenikra tikun. And therefore, if you want to make these uh, bottom kosher, you would have to go and you would have to restitch them with new gidim. If you have three stitches that are torn, even if they're not next to each other, says the Mishnah, even if you have one stitch torn on one side of the titura, another another stitch torn on another side, so maybe you have one stitch torn up here, one stitch torn over here, and one stitch torn down there. So the are not next to each other, they're on three different sides, doesn't matter. Three stitches that are torn. If you're dealing with Yeshanim, with old tefillin, according to the Rambam, they're puzzle. According, if they're Chadashim, it would be kosher. Then the Mechaber said that this is only true if the Moshev Habatim, the foundation of the Batim, is intact. Is cut in Yudal and Moshev Habatim. Titura. Once again, this means the Titura of the Chanal. The Gamba said that's Rama Kemay Bahagol El. The Gamba Batim Tzvichim Lihiyos Kavi Kayamim. Even though the Loshen of the Mechaber is that the Titura has to be fully intact. The Ramah always holds that the Kitsitsa also has to be fully intact. So when is this true that we say that by Tvilin Chadoshim, according to the Mechaber, right? The Mechaber said Tvilin Chadoshim are okay even if three stitches got torn. As long as the bias is intact, the Lashon of the Mechaber was the Moshav Habatim, the Titura, the Ramah would hold that it's the Kitsitsa also has to be fully intact. Why didn't the Ramah say it over here? Because, says Mr. Borelisha Samach Alamayla, he was relying on his Shita already in Sif Aleph, where also the Ramah, the Mechaber, when he was speaking about damage in the interior Batim of the Shalroish, um, the the Mechaber said, when when could the Batim be kosher? Kolzman she'or Moshev Abatim Kayam, when the Titura is intact, and the Ramah commented over there in Sif Aleph, it said not only the Titura, also the Kitsitsa. So the Ramah over here in Sif Beis is relying on what he said in Sif Aleph, and understanding that you, the reader, will understand that it means that the Kitsitsa has to be intact as well. 
says to be shtroy's cotton test. Vav, the Ramah said we should be chayshish for both svaras. We should be chayshish for the mechaber that says that yeshanim become posel. Chadashim are still kisherim. And then the other sheet that the Ramah brought down that it's the opposite. Chadashim are posel, yeshanim are kisherim. Says to be shtroy's cotton test. Vav, ritzayin aloymar. Lahachmer machmazel lechadchilu b'shteim. Lechadchilu we should be machmer by both. Ach, b'mokam she'i ef shalim tzay tefillin acherim. But if you don't have other tefillin to use, v'loi lachsa v'litvar tefillin elu, and you also don't have the ability to restitch these tefillin, maybe you don't have gidin, so you can't restitch these tefillin, then yesh lismaich al hamakilin, then you could rely on those shittas that rule leniently, b'psikas ha-tefirais, when it comes to the shilas of torn stitches, b'ein b'chadoshais, u'bein b'yashanais, you could be makele when it comes to the question of new batim or old batim. So we could be makele, let's say, like the Rambam, and we could say that chadoshim are ksherim. Even though we have another sheet that says that chadoshim are psulim, we could be makele like the Rambam. Ubein b'shtet tfirois, ubein b'shalosh. We could also be makele when it comes to the question of how many stitches are ripped, right? We have the, the Rambam who says that three stitches are always puzzle, but they're only puzzle by yeshanim. So let's say you have tefillin that are yeshanim, and they have three stitches that are ripped. You could go like the Ramah, and you could say, okay, but these are yeshanim. And uh, the Ramah shita is that the yeshanim are kosher, and there's only chadashim that are puzzle. So you can be makel in every direction. Okay. Oh, no, but we didn't finish. It's cut in Tezvav. Says the, Mecha- says the Mishnah Burem. Ach, bisholosh, but whenever you're dealing with batim that have three torn stitches, yizar shalo yivarech aleihem, even though you could put them on, but don't make a bracha on them. Vayin bebir alacha. Okay, now we move along to Sif Gimel here on Nun Zayin Abad Aleph, and we begin to discuss the halachas that pertain to the ritzuas, to the straps of the tefillin. Says the Mechaber, Or haritzuas, the hide that the ritzuas are made out of, it has to be produced from species of behemois, domesticated animals, or chayos, non-domesticated animals, or oifal hatahirim. They have to be kosher species. So let's say a cow, a sheep, a lamb, a deer, which is a chaya, a duck, a, a chicken, kosher fowl, but they have to be kosher species. Once again, the halach is that the individual individual animal does not have to be a kosher animal, meaning it doesn't have to have a kosher shechita so that you could actually eat the basar of this animal, but it has to be an animal that is a kosher species. Says the Mishtabura, very interesting Mishtabura here, ois katan tezayin. So the ritzuas have to be uh, manufactured from a behemoth tahira, why? Says the Mishnah Berurah, because he brings down the Gemara from Shabbos Chavches Amibes that says that Meleches Shamayim, when you're using leather from Meleches Shamayim, it has to be the hide of a behemoth tahira. Now, we know already from learning what we've learned already in Hilchas Trillin, we know that the or of the batim have to come from a behemoth tahira. We know that the cloth that the parshias are written on have to come from a behemoth tahira. And where do we learn that out from? We learned that out from a drasha from a pasuk. The pasuk by Tfilin says, Laman Hashem beficha. You wear Tfilin so that you should become imbued with Tairas Hashem, and the Tairas Hashem should be beficha. And the Gemara Darshans, what does this mean? Laman Tairas Hashem beficha. It has to be manufactured from something that's mutter beficha, something that you're allowed to consume, something that's mutter beficha. Over here, when it comes to the ritzuas, we're not learning it out from Laman Tietar Hashem beficha. Over here, the Mishnah is referencing the Gemara in Shabbos and Chav Chesam and Beis. The Gemara in Shabbos and Chav Chesam and Beis brings down a brisa. Brisa says, Tani Rav Yosef, Rav Yosef taught a brisa, b'meleches shamayim, um, the only type of hide that's kosher from Alecha Shamayim is Ur Behemoth Tahira Bovat. Only the hides of a kosher species of animal. Now, Rav Yosef does not bring down 
the drasha of Lamam Tiyateres Hashem Befich at all. And the Gemara in Shabbos over there, Chavches Amin Beis, goes back and forth trying to figure out what type of Malecha Shamayim is Rav Yosef referring to. And the Gemara concludes that he's referring to the Ritzuas of Tefillin. So here we have two different things. We have the parshas of tefillin and the bottom of the tefillin. The fact that that has to come from a behemoth tahira, that's from a laman tiyataras Hashem b'ficha. The fact that the ritzuas have to come from a behemoth tahira, that's this tani Rav Yosef, lehukshiru lelamach shamayim el a behemoth tahira bavad. And that has nothing to do with laman tiyataras Hashem b'ficha. So where does that come from and why is it different? <clears throat> it would seem that the reason it's different is because the parshiyos and the batim are considered the guf hatfilin. That's the main part of the tfilin. So that we use the pasuk lamantia taras hashem befita. The ritzuas of the tfilin are not considered the guf of the tfilin. The ritzuas, the Gemara in Megillah says, are considered tashmishay kedusha. There's something that's a tashmish of the mitzvah, something that's used for the mitzvah. But it's not Kedusha Gufa. It's Tashmish Kedusha, but it's not Guf HaKedusha. So the Ritzuas are kind of like a notch down in Kedusha from the bottom and from the Parshias. So the bottom and the Parshias, that's Lamat Yetar Sashem Bevicha. The Ritzuas, that's Lehukshir Lulamach Shamayim Ela Or Behema Tahira Bovad. Okay. Let's go weiter in the Mechaber over here, second line from the bottom. So the Ritzuas have to come from the hides of a kosher species of animal. Continues the Mechaber and he says, The leather has to be processed. It has to be tanned. It has to be done. It has to be done. It has to be done. Says the Mishnabura, It's required. Says the Mishnabura, Kol hai tzarech. Whenever we say tsarich over here, right? We said that the aura of the Ritzuas, tsarich, it's required that it should come from the aura of a behemoth aura. Now we say with tsarich, we need, it's required that it should be ma'ubid lishmai. Says the Mishnabur, call hai tsarich li'ikuvahu. I feel a bit the evidence. This is a necessity. It must be done this way. Otherwise, the tefillah will be possible even with the evidence. Ice cotton yudches lishmai. The leather, the hides have to be tanned. It has to be mo'ubed lishmai. Says the Mishnabura. Va'afilu harambam demekel babatim. Even the Rambam, where we learned earlier that the Rambam is mekel when it comes to the ur of the batim. According to the Rambam, the hide that's used for the batim does not have to be mo'ubed lishmai. The chamavur le'el besim and lamed be'isif lamed zayin. Mo'ide hacha. But he agrees over here by the Ritzuis that the Ritzuas do need Ibud Lishmai. Now that's very interesting, because I just told you a couple of minutes ago that the Ritzuas are considered a notch down in Kedusha from the bottom. The bottom are the Guf HaTfilin, the Parashiyas are the Guf HaTfilin, the Ritzuas are a Tashmish Kedusha. Yet the Rambam is telling me that the Ur of the bottom does not need Ibud Lishmai, but the Ur for the Ritzuas does need Ibud Lishmai. Why would that be? Well, the Mishnah Bruce says over here, the Tam ayin belavush ubemagan avram. And it would seem that the explanation of this is that the Rambam is really being very pragmatic. He says, ibud, tanning, the, the most notable effect of the tanning process is to soften the hides. Says the Rambam, we don't want the hide of the bias to be soft. We want it to be hard. We don't want it to be soft. We want it to maintain the ribua. We don't want it to flex. We don't want it to bend. We don't want it to spread apart. So, says the Rambam, Ibud is not even a strict requirement when it comes to the R of the bottom. Maybe you don't need tanning at all. Take the raw hide and form it into the bottom and don't do Ibud at all. Ibud lishmai certainly you don't need. Because if you don't need Ibud, then you don't need the Ibud to be done lishmai. But Ritsuis, Ritsuis, we need to be soft. Ritsuis, we need to make a kesher. Ritsuis, we need to form it around our head. We need to wrap it around our arms. So says the Ramam, 
By Ritzuis, you need Ibud. If you need Ibud, then the Ibud has to be done Lishmai. Continues the Chavetz Chaim here in Ice Katan Yudches. The Hashchora, when it comes to the blackening of the Ritzuis, now this is a little bit interesting. <laughs> I think that the, the Chavetz Chaim always assumed, as a Dara Pashat, that we're going to read an entire Sif of Mechaber and Ramah before we dive into his Pirish. But I don't always do that, right? Sometimes I read a phrase from the Mishnabura, from the Mechaber, and go straight into the Mishnabura so that we understand it properly. But the Chavetz Chaim assumed that all of the information that's contained in the Sif we have already when we go into the Mishnabura. Now, we didn't hear anything about Hashchar yet. We didn't speak yet about blackening the Ritzuis. The Chavetz Chaim over here is addressing blackening the Ritzuis, and he says, the blackening of the Ritzuis has to be done Lishma. Now, we're going to see momentarily, the Mechaber is going to tell us that this is a halacha lamay shemisinai, that you have to make the Ritzuis black. So says the Mishnabura, the ha'ashchar tzarek kamkein shi'yeh Lishma, it has to be done Lishma, because it's a halacha lamay shemisinai. It's a strict requirement, it's a daraisa, it has to be done Lishma. We're going to see there are those who disagree. Namely the Mechaber. But all right, let's see. Said the Mishnabur of Hashkar Tzar Kamkin Shia Lishma. Vimloi Ibdon Lishman. Let's say you made, you manufactured the Ritzuis, and the Ibud, the tanning, was not done Lishman. Enoi Moyel Afiluim Yashkirein Akakak Lishman. If you have leather that was not tanned Lishmoi, and now you want to use it for Ritzuis, so somehow you say to yourself, all right, the Ibud wasn't done Lishman. But what I'll do now is I'll do the final step in the preparation of the Ritzuis, the blackening. I'll do that, Lishmai, and maybe that will rescue the Ritzuis. Right now, the Ritzuis have, have a psal, they weren't Mu'ubid Lishmai. But I'll do the Hashchara Lishmai, and maybe that could rescue the Ritzuis. We're going to see there is a sheet that it holds that way. But the Mishnah says no. The Mishnah says, if you did not do the Ibud Lishmai, Einoimoyel, it's not effective. Afilim Yashkir and Achakach Lishman. Even if you then go ahead and do the blackening Lishman, you cannot rescue these Ritzus. And he brings this down from a Chuvas Trashmuel Simon Zayin Tesvav Ayin Chum. Ube Chuvas Be'er Eisek Kosav, the Hashkar Lishma Mahani. We have this Chuvas Be'er Eisek who disagrees and says that you can. Rescue the Ritzuis by doing the Hashkar Lishma. Vayin b'chuvas Rabbi Kiva Eger de Hiskim Ladina Kad Vashmul Anal. However, Rabbi Kiva Eger Paskin like this Vashmul that it does not help. Vehirish Alamakilin Baze and he stormed against those who were Mekel Ayin Chum. So definitely we require the Ritzuis to have Ibud Lishmai. It's not enough for them to just have the blackening done Lishmai. Okay. Now we go to the final two words in the Mechaber here on Nun Zayin Amad Aleph. Haritzuais shechairais mibachutz. The Ritzuas have to be blackened on the outside. Now the outside over here does not mean what you think it means. The temptation is to think that it means the outer surface, the surface that we choose to wear facing outward has to be black, while the other side does not. That might be true. It is true, but that's not what the Mechaber means here. What the Mechaber means over here is that the hide has an outer surface and an inner surface. The outer surface is the surface that's closer to the exterior of the behema. What we always say is on the hairy side of the hide. The panim, the inside of the ur, is the side of the hide that's closer to the interior of the animal. What the Mechaber is saying over here is that when we blacken the Ritzuas, there's a specific side of the Ritzuah that we must blacken. We can't just decide which side we want to wear facing out and blacken that side. No, we have to blacken it on the outside of the hide. That's the side of the hide that's closer to the exterior of the animal. So, again, the Mechaber said, Haritzuais shechairais mibachutz. The Ritzuahs have to be black on the outside. Avol mitzad pnim. But on the inside... You can make them whatever color you want. Chutz me adoim, but not red. Why? Shema yomru, because people will see a red ritzua 
and they'll say shemidam chatotov that you must have had blisters or or wounds or scabs that broke and blood got onto the tefillin, and that's why the in, the the back side of the ritzua is black, and now it looks disgusting. So that would be a tremendous gnai for the tefillin for the for people to think that the ritzuas are red from blood. So therefore, says the mechaber. Really, the backside of the Ritzuas, you want to make them blue, make them blue. You want to make them green, make them green. You can make them any color you want, just not red. Because red would create a G'nai. Let's take a look here at the Mishnabura back in Zion Amad Aleph. Ice cut in your test. Says the Mishnabura, Shchairais. We need the Ritzuas to be black on the on their outer surface. Ayin Babar Sha'amar, Damash Bimidvarov. He says, take a look at the Sefer Bar Sha'amar, where it is implied by his words, De mitzvah la hashiran, that it's a mitzvah to black in the Ritzuas, Achiyu Shchairais Ka'irev, until they are black like a raven. That's how black they should be. Uh, I think it's a raven, an Oirev. So that's, we want them black, black, black. Vedan, you should know. If the ritzuas get old, and the blackness wears off of them, you have to blacken them again. This is the same halacha that we saw in the context of the ribua of the batim. We said that the batim must be meruba; they have to be squared, right? They have to be completely squared. Remember all of that? The stitches have to be squared. The bias has to be squared. The titura has to be squared. And we learned over there, it's not enough for them to be squared when they're manufactured. If they were squared when they were manufactured and then they lost the ribua, you have to do the ribua over again. Well, says the Mishnah over here, the same halacha applies to the blackening of the ritzuas. If the ritzuas were beautifully black like this, when you were bar mitzvah bacher, but now we're in your 40s, they wore out, you got to black them over again. Continues the Mishnah Berurah, where you tighten the kesher, especially on the shalyad, where you're always pulling against it and catching the ritzua, he said it is very common for the blackness to wear off, and that's something that we need to pay attention to. We should be very careful about this halacha. The Mechaber said that the Ritzuas have to be black. What does Mibachutz mean? Says the Mishnah what I told you. It's the exterior surface of the hide, the side that's closer to the hair on the exterior of the animal. Because that's the smoother part of the hide. And for the noy of Tfilin, for the beauty of Tfilin, that's the side that we have to blacken and wear facing out. If you blacken them on the inside, not effective. You have to go ahead again and blacken it on the proper side of the hide. The ayin bebir halacha. Now, the lotion of the mechaber on the top line was that the outside has to be black. Avon mitzad pnim, but the inside of the ritzua, yase me'ezet tzevesh ha Now, if we touch those words literally, what it means is, you should make them from whatever color you desire. Now, the implication of that word is, of those words are, that you must color the backside of the ritzua, right? Yase, you should make it for whatever color you want. It sounds like you got to make it a color. Pick a color. You want blue? You want green? You, you, know, you know, I don't know. You want yellow? Just not red. Says the Mishnah Bruno. That's not what it means. Yase. What the Mechaber wants to say is, Im Yirtse, let's buy my son. If it came to you a cranking cup that you want to color the inside of the Ritzel, so Mimeg does ton. You want to color it, color it whatever color you want. But you're not to color it at all. And actually, there could be a problem coloring it. Ah, there's a harambam. The shitas harambam is that the outside of the ritzua, that has to be black. How about the inside of the ritzua? 
The inside of the Ritsua says the Rambam should be colored. But what color should it be? It should be whatever color the Kitsitsa is, whatever color the bias is. Now, <clears throat> believe it or not, it's even though <coughs> even though you have never, ever, ever seen um, uh, a bias of Tvilin that are a different color, <coughs> Right, and we learned on Nundalad Amadal of Simon Lamid Bey Sif Mem. We learned Or Habatim Mitzvah La Asoy Soy Shachar. The what did the Mechaber say? It's a mitzvah to make them black. And let me just see. We had the Mishdebura. Yeah, Mishdebura is cut in Kuf Pei Dalit Mitzvah. The Mishnah said, "Mashma the b'diavet ain't a likuva. It's not ma'akiv if it's not black. The yesh pais kim desvir lulu do alach lamay shemis sinai kamay or tzuas a likuva who afil b'diavet. There are shitas that it's a halach lamay shemis sinai and it's black, but it's not a tava pashit that it should be black. And indeed, the Makaba wrote mitzvah la asay say shachar. From the Rambam, it comes out <coughs> that the bottom could be white, they could be blue." But what the Ramam does say is, whatever color the bias is, that's what color the back of the Ritsua should be. So now, what do we have over here? What we have over here so far is, the Mechaber says that they should be black on the outside. The inside? Eh, make them whatever color you want. Says the Mishtabura, understand the Mechaber properly. You're not Mechuyiv to make them any color at all. You can leave them the way they are. Even though the Rambam says that you should make them whatever color the bias is, even though we are going to make the bottom black, right? Because we paskin that it's a mitzvah and maybe even a halacha l'mayshim Sinai to make them black. So we're going to make our bottom black. Once we make our bottom black, that according to the Rambam, we really should make the backside of the Ritsua black also. Because that's the Sheet of the Rambam. Sheet of the Rambam is, whatever color the bias is, it could be white, it could be green, it could be blue, but whatever color the bias is, that's what color the backside of the Ritsua should be. But we don't pass it like the Rambam. Therefore, we could leave the backside of our Ritsua raw. We could leave it uncolored. We don't have to do anything. If you're going to color it, you're going to have to color it black. Because the Rambam holds, it's got to be the same. Once you color it, you got to color it the same color as the as the bias. But says the Mishnah we don't paskin like the Rambam. We're not noyig like the Rambam, and this is where you get into a little bit of a um, of a kerfuffle, um, a controversy, I guess, when it comes to the Ritzuis that are around now. And I myself have them, not on these tefillin. These are my old tefillin that I use here for show and tell for Lima Atayra. I wouldn't be mavaza them, just, you know, show and tell. But this is for Lima Atayra, so it's not a bazillion at all. That's Khalilo. But on the tefillin that I wear every day, my ritsuas are black, are, are blackened on the inside. Um, you know, so that way, even if some of the blacking comes off on the surface... The leather is blackened all the way through. Um, but there are those that say that really we shouldn't do that because it makes it look like we paskin like the Rambam. And we don't paskin like the Rambam. So why are you blackening the backside of the tefillin, which looks like cheats the Rambam, when we don't paskin like the Rambam? So there are those that are not so happy with it. Okay. Now we go to Sif Dalit. Second line down in the Mechaber. Says the Mechaber. Now, this is very interesting. We have just established that we have a halacha l'may shibi sinai that the, the, the ritzuis must be blackened. Now, when it comes to the shayla of lishma, says the mechaber, toiv, it would be good, she'ashchirem yisrael lishman, that the blackening should be done by a yisraeli, should be done by a yehudi, and it should be done lishman velo yeno yehudi, and it should not be done by an eno yehudi because they're not capable of doing it lishman. 
But, says the Mechaber, that's only toiv. It's only good. It's not a strict requirement. Says the Ramah Haga, Umiu b'dievet kosher im hishchir ar habatim. B'dievet, the tefillin are kosher, as long as the batim are blackened. Um, one second. Um, no, I alert this wrong. Haga, umiu b'dievet kosher im hishchir ar habatim. B'dievet, the tefillin are kosher, if the batim were blackened by an Eni Yehudi, Aval Haritsuis, I feel a bit puzzle. But the Ritsuis, the Ramah Paskins, are puzzle even bidiyevit. If they weren't done Lishma and they were done by an Eni Yehudi. So what do we have here? We have the Mechaber says that the blackening of the Ritsuis is only a mitzvah, it's only good, it's only Lechatchila. Toiv, Sheashkire Yisrael Lishman, Veloy Eni Yehudi. The Ramah says no. The Ritsuis must be blackened Lishma. The Batim, that is only Lechatchila. So you have a pair of film that were blackened, that were painted, but you have a Batim that were painted by an Eni Yehudi, but the evidence okay. But Ritsuis not. Let's take a look here at the Mishnah Rice Cut and Chav Beis. Toiv. Ava Bediyeved, Karshal Lididei, Afilo Ayidei Eni Yehudi. But according to the Mechaber, your tefillin are kosher, even if the Ritsuis were done, they were painted by an Eni Yehudi, and it was not done Lishmai. Why? Because the Mechaber holds that even though the blackening is a requirement midaraisa, halakha lamayshim isinai, still in all, bidiyeved, it's okay, Without Lishma. The Ramah Bahaga Chilkalov, the Ramah in his Haga argues on the Machaber. With Sphere Ale, the Ramah holds the Beritsuis that when it comes to the Ritsuis, the Hashachrus, who Allah Kalamai should be Sinai, Tsarach Hashachrus Lishman. It must be done Lishmai. Umemelab ain't a Yehudi, they know he's a Lishma apostle. And therefore, if it ain't a Yehudi, does it as possible. Vedino, he could the Lael, the Sibin Labid Basil, Indian cloth I in Chum. And the Allah of the Ritsuis would be identical to the Allah of the cloth. By cloth, the cloth needs ibud lishmai, and if it's done by any Yehudi, we have a shaylif. You're oimel al gabav, and you help him, and you see you are you misayeya him in in the work. Maybe it's okay, but it's got to be done lishmai because it's halach l'may shmi sinai. So the Ramah says, if the painting of the ritzuos is halach l'may shmi sinai, and it's a requirement midaraisa, then it must be done lishmai. And if it wasn't done lishmai, then even with the evidence puzzle. A very puzzling the Mechaber. The Mechaber, he, he doesn't disagree that it's Allah Chalamai Shemi Sinai. He agrees that the blackening of the Ritzuis is Allah Chalamai Shemi Sinai. But for some reason he holds that even though it's Allah Chalamai Shemi Sinai, but the evidence, okay, if it wasn't done Lishmai. Now the Batim are a different story because the Batim is, there's a Machloikis whether or not the Batim are a Allah Chalamai Shemi Sinai that they need to be black. We saw the Ramam says they don't have to be black at all. They could be white, according to the Rambam. Let's go further in this, uh, in Eiskot Lechav Beis. Avol Ba'ara Batim, when it comes to the Batim, to the Roiv Paiskim Shacharusai Hu Lemitzvah Ba'alma Vlaili Ikuva, when it comes to the Batim themselves, most Sheetas hold that the blackening is not a requirement to Allah Chalamai Shabbi Sinai. It's only Yilachatchil, it's Mitzvah Ba'alma. That's why by the bottom, the Ramah agrees that Pidyeva, we don't need the blackening to be done Lishman. But the Ritsuas have to be done Lishman. Really, when the Ramah wrote this Haga, he should have come off of the Mechaber. The Mechaber says that Pidyeva, you don't need it Lishman. The Ramah should have said, Yesh Oimrim, that you do. Instead, he wrote it flat out. I feel it with the avid puzzle. He wrote it with a stamus for some reason. But the, the Mishnah says, Ach, It's not strange. We see it this way other times as well. The Ritzuis are puzzle even with the avid. If they weren't done, Lushmai, I will Ritzuis. And my son, Nachri, if a, if a, if a non Jew. Did the blackening of the Ritzuis? I feel the Israel, or if a Yid did it, but he did it, 
According to the Rama, it's possible. Fatam Kanal Basiv Kotl Chav Beis because it's it's a requirement to lock Alamayshu be Sinai. The Choshkin B'Chol Davar Shetzarek Matfilin Guf Ali Kuva. Certainly anything else that's required in the Guf Hatfilin, and if you don't have it, it's Li Kuva. All of those things must be done Lishmai. Come I see a Sabayis Vashin Shalai. The making of the Batim has to be done Lishmai. The forming of the Shin on the exterior of, of the Shalroish, which is a requirement to lock Alamayshu be Sinai, must be done Lishmai. Or the sewing closed, which is Allah Sinai, must be done Lishmai. Or making the knots on the Shalyad and the Shalroish, the knots have to be made Lishmai because they're Allah Lishmai. Even if they were done by a Yid, if they weren't done Lishmai, it's possible. Because of our prima and the prima garden says the Yesh Libnaya Milas is called Zayde Katan. None of these things should be done by a minor. I feel him Godal Yaman al Gabov, even if he has an adult standing over him, via Tzaveu and instructing him, Lasay Slishma to do it Lishma, still in all a cotton shouldn't do it because he's not a Bardas. Nor should any of these things be done by a woman. I ain't chum as if out of the base. Vashkaras are ritzuis, when it comes to blackening the ritzuis, to ze enenu beguf hatfilin, that's not something that's done beguf hatfilin. Remember, we said that the bottom, the parshiyos, those are the guf hatfilin. The straps are teshmishe kedusha. Mutter ayide isha. To hear das lasis lishma kamay ish. Ava ayide in Yehudi, vakatan ene mutter, achiyam and achra agabam, ukidala eli in yiklaf, besimil amin beis, ayin shamas if tes. Chav dalid, if it was done, the Ritzuis, if they were painted by an Eina Yehudi or by a Yisrael Eina Lishma, Puzzle, Kos of Amagad Avram, Dim Chazar Yisrael Vishkir and Lishma. Let's say an Eina Yehudi painted the Ritzuis. Was it done Lishma? It's Puzzle. So now you want to take it and you want to paint over it. You'll paint it again. You'll do another layer of black paint. And this time you'll do it Lishma. The Magad Avram says Kosher. It would be okay. The heavy Raya is and he brings a Raya. However, the Prima Gadim and other Achraidim are not happy with the Raya of the Magen Avram. And these Achraidim bly but Tzarech Iyun whether or not this works. He gives a different Eitzah what to do if they were painted Shaloi Lishma. Paint the other side of the Ritzu Lishma and wear it that way. This whole discussion is only germane to a case where you don't have other Ritzuas available. Okay? We'll stop over here. We'll continue next time with Sif Hey. Thank you so much for joining me for Liman Atari. This is Liman Atari. It should be Megan and God's Klai Yisrael. The Rajon should send Yeshua to Fuaz Parnasa. Shaduchim to all those in need. And we should be Zaychit to see. To be Eskar Al Sedek. Be Meherav Yamenu. Amen. Be well.